Hey developers, today we're going to talk about jQuery. Do we really need to use jQuery still? If you're a new web developer, should you learn jQuery? And if you do, what's the equivalent of the jQuery inside just plain old JavaScript? So today we're going to talk about that. Please stay all the way to the end because if you watch all the way to the end, I'm actually going to go over some examples in code, in Visual Studio Code, of how you translate something you would have done in jQuery over to just JavaScript. And we're going to talk about uh, some best practices there and if you should use jQuery or not. So jQuery has been around for many, many years. It's sort of everybody's first like library if you learn web development that you use jQuery because it made it so easy to manipulate the DOM, to do some easy uh, slide in transitions and made it really easy to uh, do some manipulations instead of having to learn JavaScript. Now, it seems to be that things have shifted so much that people don't use jQuery as much. I think it's a good idea to probably learn it because there's so many websites out there that use jQuery. And it's a good, it's probably a good chance if you come onto a team that you're going to have to do some jQuery manipulation. So I think it's a good idea to learn. But if, if you're trying to just learn JavaScript and web development from scratch, I would highly recommend learning how to do things without jQuery because you are going to be doing that a lot too. Um, do you really need to use jQuery? I don't think so. So if you're a brand new developer and you have a, a greenfield project that you can use any technologies you want, there would be really no reason to use jQuery, jQuery at all. You can really just, uh, there's many better libraries out there. You can just do most of the stuff just without jQuery, just using plain old JavaScript. Um, it's good to know that it's out there. And like I said, if you're going on a team that uses it, obviously it's a good thing to learn. But if you're in a brand new project, I really don't see a reason why to. And also, it's a good thing to remember that if you're using like React or Angular, you really don't need to... Uh, a lot of the stuff that you might be using jQuery in the past, you can just use uh, you know, the built-in stuff with React or Angular or Vue.js. I was actually influenced a lot by this topic from the Syntax podcast by Wes Boss and Scott Talinsky. I'll leave a link below in the description. And it describes a lot of the topics we're going to talk about today in a lot more detail. They go over it for about an hour and they talk about is jQuery dead. So I just want to give a shout out to that podcast. Kind of gave me the idea. So this really cool website, it's called, there's a GitHub repo and it's called You Don't Need jQuery. And what it does is it goes over a lot of the stuff in the past that you might have used jQuery for, and it tells you how to use it without it. And it even gives a disclaimer at the top that front-end environments evolve rapidly nowadays, and modern browsers have already implemented a great deal of the DOM, BOM, APIs, which are good enough for production to use. We don't have to learn jQuery from scratch for DOM manipulation or event handling. In the meantime, thanks to the spread of front-end libraries such as React, Angular, and Vue, manipulating the DOM directly becomes an anti-pattern. So, I mean, right there, you could see, like I was saying, you really don't need jQuery, but it's good to know some things about it. So let's take a look at some of these things, uh, like query selectors. There's obviously in the past we didn't have these, but now we have document query selector and document query selector all. So in the past, uh, it wasn't as easy to select different parts of the DOM. Uh, now, um, usually jQuery is great because you can use basically CSS type selectors to select different parts of the DOM. And now we can do it with these easily with query selector and query selector all. Still, there's a caveat that if you can, you probably want to just use document get element by ID or get elements by class name or by tag name because they are faster than these two. But we can still do it. So let me show you guys a little test. I created a web page. Hello world. You know, and some lorem ipsum down here. And if you can see here, I have revealed the web page. So the code I have here is really, really simple. I just have the head, document type. Title jQuery test. I added in the CDN for jQuery version 3.3.1 minified. I use my style tag at the top to just put some basic HTML or CSS that makes this really beautiful orange col color up here. Uh, and I have a hello world. So I have a script tag down here and I could show you guys. I hope you could see that. Um, if I wanted to. I'd uh, use jQuery to get hold of the h1 tag, for example. So we usually do dollar sign and then h1. And then we got the basically got it at this point. So uh, we can do a lot of things. Um, 
maybe we want to uh, add a background color to it. So to do that, we would do .css, and then we do background color. And then from background color, uh, we're gonna put in the color. So let's do it blue. Okay, and you can see now we have this ugly blue border to the top here. So, but let's say we wanted to do this without jQuery. So that shouldn't be too bad. We'll, hi, uh, we'll go ahead and deselect that. And then we can do a couple ways. We can do document.query selector. And then we can just put in h1 here. And then to add CSS classes, you can see right here, we can uh, see that's how you select the DOM. But if we want to do like .css, we can do this el, el dot, oops, you got to do dot style, excuse me, dot background color. And then we'll put in, I don't know, let's do red. We'll save it. So now we have that red border to the background. So instead of using the .css, all we had to do is .style .background color. So that's pretty easy. Uh, we don't have to use document.querySelector since it's an H1 tag. We can do document get element by tag name. And we can put H1 in there. Let's uh, let's put a const to L, and this actually returns an array, so or sort of array, I should say. So we could do the same thing. L, we'll get the first element of that. Then we'll do uh, style, and then we'll do background color, and then let's do I don't know uh, green. Saved it. So now it's a green background. So you can see we could use document.querySelector or we can just do get element by tag name and then get the first element of that, of what it returns and then get the background color. So, I mean, that's obviously a couple quick, way, quick ways we can use jQuery uh, without using jQuery. Uh, we can actually add whole classes too. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the L again. So in jQuery, we might add a class like this. So We'll do h1 and we do add class and put the class name is and I already have one here called my class and if we save that you can see here it added the class in there added a border five pixels solid and blue around it uh, instead we can do this through without jQuery so in that case we do l dot uh, we'll do zero so it's a zero element. We can do class list dot add, and we give it a string my class. And we can do the same thing. So you can see here, saved it, refreshed it. If I get rid of this, it's back to normal. It's back there again. So I mean that's one way of doing it. Uh, other document selectors. I mean we could have certainly added a div tag. Uh, we do have a div tag here. We could have put in an ID. I don't know, my div. And with jQuery, we could have done it this way uh, with the hashtag. We can put a div, uh, we'll put the name of it, my div. Not a very good name. And we can even add a click event to it if we wanted to. And then. I don't know. We can type something here. Console log hello. So you can see here. Click on it. There we go. If we click on the text, we get hello in the console. So we know it's working correctly. So that works. Uh, but if we wanted to do that without, without jQuery, we could do something like this. i got to get my hotkeys correct here. Uh, so we still have our, well, we have, we'll do const l. Now we can do document dot get element uh, by ID. And we know the ID in this case is my div. And if we console log l, 
I refresh it, you can see here, yep, here's my div. So in this case, we can do L, and then we can do add event listener, and we'll add a click event listener, and then we'll create a function, and we'll have a closing bracket on that function, and we can do console log uh, pressed. And if we do that, you see here now we see pressed every time we hit it. So, I mean, there's one way to do it and there's there's more than there's always more than one way to do things and I think this is kind of a good illustration of how we can use we can use jQuery, but really we don't have to. There's a lot better ways of doing it. If you guys like this video, maybe I'll do a couple more of the translation between jQuery and doing it without jQuery just to give you guys a little bit more information on how to do it. If you are interested, leave a comment below. Let me know if that sounds interesting to you guys. If not, uh, that's okay too. Please click that like button and click that subscribe button. And if you really love me, click that bell button. That really helps you out. Thanks. Bye.